Hello everyone, you probably know about Beam Search already. It's a way of generating text. But still, there's a bunch of interesting implementation details about Beam Search that you might not know about. Today, I'm going to walk through how Beam Search is implemented in the Hugging Face Transformers library. This is probably the most popular library in NLP today that allows you to easily download and use pre trained transformer models. This is a typical example of how to generate text using the Transformer library. Here, we are using the GP2 model. This is the model that is famous for the talking unicorns. We're using this model to generate completions for two of the sentences, once upon a time and hi, I am a. All of this is pretty standard. First, we load the tokenizer and the model. We encode the sentences into the tokens and then we generate output tokens and decode it and print it out. And when we run this, we see that it gives out two sentences with the right prefixes, once upon a time and something about Moses, and then, hi, I'm a big fan of this book, whatever. Let's review what is Beam Search. So Beam Search is an algorithm that lets you generate a sequence from a model that can only generate one token at a time. Without Beam Search, the most obvious way to generate a sequence from a model is greedy search. Basically, you select the word with the highest probability at each point as the next word. For example, the word nice here has the highest score out of the three words dog, nice, and car, so we pick nice, and then we move on to the next word. However, this is not optimal, and in the end, we might not find the highest probability sequence. You might wonder, can we find the globally optimal solution? It's not easy, because if we enumerate every single path, this quickly becomes exponential. Beam search is basically a middle ground between greedy decoding and searching a full tree. In beam search, we're keeping the top k candidates at each step, where k is called the beam width. Typically, k is equal to 5 or something like that. In this example, k is equal to 2. So we are only choosing the top two most promising candidates at each step. In the first step, we choose dog and nice. And in subsequent steps, we only take candidate sequences in the beam to search further. And in each iteration, we will always have exactly k candidate sequences, which are called beams. Notice that we never explore the branch car because it was not in the beam in the first step. The idea of beam search is pretty simple. But if you think about it, there are a lot of questions about how to implement this in practice. For example, how do you actually keep track of the candidate sequences and feed them into the model? And how do you do this efficiently? Now back to the implementation. Here is a line of code that performs the generation. Notice that we are not actually calling beam search. We are calling model.generate with the parameter numBeams equal to 3. And this will trigger the beam search function. So I've stepped into the model.generate function. This function handles a lot of different generation procedures, like contrastive search, or greedy generation, or sampling generation, that I'm not going to get into today. And it goes into the beam search generation mode if the number of beams is greater than one, and it's also not one of the other types of generation, like sampling generation. Before we dive into the code, let's get a sense of the data structures that we're passing into the model. This is the input of the model. It is a tensor representing all of the beams. I am a boy, I am a dog, and I am a woman. Let's see. Let's say that these are the three beams. The model takes in the three beams, and for each beam, it produces a probability distribution of what is the next token for each of the beams. In this case, the beam size is three, so we take the top three scoring token completions across all of the completions, and let's say that it is these three that are circled and in bold. These will be the three tokens that will be appended to the beam in the next iteration. Notice that in addition to the next tokens for each beam, we also have to keep track of which beam each token corresponds to, so we can attach the correct beams to the tokens. In this example, the three beams in the next iteration will be I am a boy who, I am a boy and, and then I am a dog who. Notice that there is no token in the top three corresponding to the beam I am a woman, so this beam is eliminated from the search. And here's the result of this iteration of beam search. 
Now I'm going to step through the main beam search function with a debugger. There is a bunch of stuff in this function that we probably don't care too much about, so I'm gonna skip over most of it and then focus on the interesting bits. The first interesting part is this part here, which basically calls the model on the inputs. So recall that the model can only generate one token at a time, given all of the previous context that it has. So all of the previous context is passed into this variable called model, input, model inputs. In this example, we have six beams because each of the two sentences has three beams. And the model basically needs to take each of these sequences and generate a probability distribution for the next token. And it does this all in parallel for all of these different sequences because we have a GPU that can process a lot of se uh, sequences in parallel. To demonstrate what I mean, let's put some print statements of uh, the model inputs. And when we run this script, we see that it starts printing out all of these input IDs. And notice that each tensor is one column more than the previous one. This is because in each, in each step, we add one token to each of these beams, all in parallel. So the first iteration, we have four tokens in each beam, and then the next one we have five, and the next one we have six, and so on, until it finishes generating all of the beams. How do we actually generate the next tokens from the model output? And this part is pretty standard. So we have a tensor of six by 50,000 something, and this is basically a probability distribution over all of the vocabulary, which in this model is around 50,000 different words. And for each of the 50,000 words, it generates a log likelihood of what is the probability of each individual vocabulary item given all of the previous context. We'll skip over a few more lines of code, and here we see um, the main part of the beam search, which is how to generate the next beams. And this is done using a torch.topk, which takes all of the next possible beams and finds the top ones, the ones with the highest scores that are the most promising for the next iteration. Next, we convert all of the highest scoring beams into token IDs. And here we have six different token IDs. And conveniently, these are the same six tokens that have been added to the end of this input IDs tensor. So this line here just appends the next tokens to the input IDs tensor and continues iterating the loop until we're done. And this loop continues until it finishes generating all of the beams, and then it calls the finalize function to turn the tensors into a list of token IDs to return for each of the input sequences. And once we have all the input IDs, the only thing that we need to do is run the, the tokenizer in reverse to turn all of the token IDs into English sentences. I hope you learned something about beam search in this video. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe to get notified on new helpful machine learning related content. It will help me a lot. Goodbye.